today on the agenda, what we're gonna do, uh, I'm quickly gonna do an intro to GitLab. Uh, and most of the presentation I'm gonna cover what's new in GitLab 15. Again, this is a short presentation just to keep your focus and attention, give you a bit more perspective of what GitLab is and isn't. Uh, and uh, in the end, I'll just cover a few events coming up. So if you're interested in participating in them, um, that would be great. Uh, disclaimer, uh, GitLab is a paid project. Uh, so uh, they do have a free uh, contribution tier, but they also have two premium tiers that you need to pay for. Uh, GitLab doesn't pay me and doesn't endorse me in any way, shape or form. So all this presentation are done in my own time on my own budget. Uh, and the uh, features that I cover in the GitLab, GitLab presentations are from the free tier. So everyone can jump, register, and use them or download it locally if you're using the self-managed version of the GitLab. So uh, from developer perspective, GitLab is a open source software. The, the free tier is open source, so you can download the code and start contributing to it today. Uh, it's built using Ruby on Rails, if you're interested in improving and learning the new language. Uh, used by a lot of open source projects. Uh, uh, Drupal uses it as a self-hosted installation. There is a bunch of Linux projects that are using it. And I'm sure if you Google, there is a bunch of articles of big projects been moving to GitLab or using GitLab. So for me personally, uh, GitLab is the code repository. So um, as I'm sure majority of you use GitHub before. This is where Joomla is stored. So GitLab is just the uh, alternative. Uh, and um, as we'll see in a second, you know, it has a familiar interface with a uh, play of menus, uh, all the information about your code, branches, commits, and files. Uh, we'll go through the as I said, interface in a second. Again, a uh, second thing I'm using GitLab for, it's an issue management. Um, I know GitHub now have tasks, so G GitLab had it way, way before that. So for the last uh, at least five or six years, it had a very decent issue management. So I'm using it on day to day for my projects and the clients, just uh, resolving the tickets. For me, GitLab is also a release management, so it helps me to coordinate the releases. Whenever I push the update to a particular website, it sends me email once the release is done. Uh, it also notifies me in many cases when there are security releases available for a particular clients, as well as notify the clients what sort of work I'm doing uh, and uh, at which stage um, each step is. And of course, uh, it's uh, for me, one of the biggest things is uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery. Uh, again, GitHub now introduced uh, actions earlier last year. So before that, there was nothing like that. You would, you would need to integrate GitHub with some third party tool that would actually run your code and maybe do a deployment and maybe do additional actions. So GitLab came as a package tool with a continuous integration going back to the integration. So I can run my code checks, I can run my um, uh, any additional checks, maybe run some testing and then do a deployment using the um, single tool rather than combining multiple tools together. So this is for me personally, uh, if we'll go to the GitLab website, it actually calls itself the one DevOps platform. So they really shifted focus maybe three or four years ago, uh, I guess before they go in public to just uh, really change the focus from what uh, they're just a competitor to GitHub. They actually said, okay, we are the DevOps platform. So if you're using any of the stages that you can see on the bottom, which is plan, create, verify, package, make your uh, pack code uh, or uh, infrastructure secure, release, configure, monitor, protect, and manage. This is um, all the 10 stages that they're trying to make sure, uh, make sure everyone see this is from the front page. So you can go and actually investigate what each uh, step 
is and what it does. Uh, there is a, also a presentation for me, uh, from me from a couple of years ago, GitLab for pro project managers, where I specifically cover all the project management tools they have. So if we'll go and quickly have a look around, again, uh, very similar to GitHub, as I mentioned before, you have an organization and you have a repositories under this organization. They can be public or private. And then uh, you can go in a particular repo. And you know, you can do um, like code browsing, the branch browsing, see how many people contributed, what's the size of the particular project. You can clone it, fork it. You can start it, you know, all your standard code repository functions. You can also see if there are any continuous integration tools are running, if it's screen check uh, or not. Uh, another cool feature is you can actually edit files right here uh, and commit it right here. They are using web ID as they call it, open web ID, so you can open the readme file go and edit it in a nice interface. There is also integration with all the popular IDs, especially Microsoft code here. Uh, and you can see there is lots of menus on the right hand side. So at the moment we're looking at repository, as I mentioned before, I'm using the uh, issues. And again, that's your again standard issue uh, list for your clients or for your work. So you can have a milestones where you can say, you know, sprint one or a particular release 10, create a milestone here. Uh, in project, you can add labels and then when you actually can create a board from your tasks, you can create a board from your labels. So in this particular case, I created to do, do and ready for release. And then I created a bunch of tasks. I can easily drag and drop them from, let's say, ready to release back into doing or back. I can jump and assign myself or someone else here, set the milestones, set time tracking, like one of the cool features I really like if I'm spending particular time on a task, I can double click it, go edit it, right? I didn't assign myself, so I can do it here. I can also do a lot of things from the um, actual, the interface. So for example, if I'd say estimation for this particular task is two hours and I already spent one hour. Save changes and now on the right hand side, I can see my progress here. So I spent one hour out of two hours. So really cool small things and there's plenty of those uh, around to see. There's also all the history of this particular task and what's been happening with it, where it was moved. So you can actually go back and trace it. I use GitLab as well. I use the list of the task to do a screenshot and then send it to a client monthly. So they can actually aware what's happening, what's been, what I've been working on. They can also see it themselves just by jumping in here and do that. Uh, another feature I was I mentioned I'm using is continuous integration. In this case, this is a very very old project that I inherited. So uh, for some of the branches, I run PHP CS, just coding standards, and PHP Matrix, which is uh, another tool, just goes through your classes and checks the complexity and possible errors there. As you can see, it's green. It's only green because it's using old uh, CMS and it's all functional programming. So there is not much this particular tool can do, but if you go to PHP CS and look at the code linking stuff, this actually didn't run. So I need to reconfigure it. It went through the file, but there are no errors because some of the uh, PHP uh, code sniffer changed uh, standards lately. So I just need to go and change the standards using the continuous integration. But again, uh, once it's all up and running, it gives me the particular 
errors, if there are any errors. Uh, for example, one of the repos actually does scan every morning for security vulnerabilities of the PHP code. Uh, so any uh, Symfony dependencies that are outdated, I'll get report daily, just done through CI here. So as you can see, there is way more menus, including analytics monitor, which I barely tapped in, but they provide the cool tools to either integrate with the analytic tools and the uh, monitoring tools, or you can do some of the stuff here. There is also the whole world out there for the Kubernetes lovers. Um, if you are doing Kubernetes or interested in Kubernetes, uh, probably at least a third of the menus are dedicated to Kubernetes and the very complicated uh, application and infrastructure setups. So this is kind of gentle introduction into uh, GitLab. Do we have any questions so far? If you do, feel free to unmute yourself. I'll just keep going then. Was um, was what you showed there, Vlad? Was that um, uh, all the free, or the, are there components in here which are in the premium? So what you can see here is free, right? Uh, so I can show you the features. For example, when uh, you go to specific features, let's find one. I just went earlier today. So most stuff for repository. Uh, is free, uh, issues is free. Uh, CI, CD gives you, they give you, they used to give you 2000 minutes, now they give you 400 minutes. So you have 400 minutes of free runners. So all this runner, if you look at the specific runner here, which was deploying the code into a particular environment, uh, you can see it runs a specific time. So in this case, it ran for five minutes. So it took five minutes of my uh, monthly quota. Um, you can buy additional minutes if you want to. Uh, to be honest, I uh, even when they drop from 2,000 to 400 minutes, and this is per user, per namespace, right? So if I'm, uh, my client has a client one namespace and I have Tomato Elephant Studio namespace, they would be uh, different. So we have 400 minutes for each. It's just the projects inside uh, there. So that's enough for me to deploy six to seven projects uh, and do checks daily. Uh, let's find. So if you'll see the premium features, they would actually say, here, go start a free trial, right? So security and compliance, again, something they've really been investing in buying startups. So a lot of scanning, and we'll talk about scanning today as well. One of the free features is scanning. So in this case, they do scanning for um, Yarn and uh, gem files here. So Ruby and uh, Node.js scanning of the dependencies, outdated and security dependencies. So they can tell you two vulnerabilities detected, well, one vulnerability detected, and so on and so forth. So actually, GitHub does that for free now, just for Node.js. I'm not sure about other languages, but uh, yeah, here, Everything done with the security, most of the stuff is paid for. But again, uh, you actually looking at the free user. So I'm logged in as a free user, so you won't see anything that is paid here. So everything that I showed is free. Is, is the board, is that a Trello board in your uh, boards? No, no, this is a GitLab board. Right. So, uh, yep, so it's exactly, it's exactly. Uh, same functionality again you can put the priority and you can put the labels in here as i mentioned before but uh this is a gitlab board uh yeah very similar to pretty much jira trello uh whatever application you're using for your management i just like that it's in here i can tag my releases i don't need to do integrations uh with uh jira or anything else but when a new client comes in i always give them a choice if they're not using anything I just let them try this one. I think it's nice and clean. Uh, I find some of the competitors are not very clean. Or for some of the competitors, for the board specifically, you actually need to have a full-time administrator. I'm not going to point the fingers to the specific applications, but some of them are very complex, where here you don't need to know much. Uh, it's basically a list of tasks, a list of labels, 
and then you can produce the columns out of your labels and then use different labels to label your tasks. Pretty much it. Okay. So as you can see from here, the uh, GitLab 13.1 was released in May 20, uh, 14 was released in June 21, and uh, 15 was just released a month ago. So obviously they're going on a yearly cycle, and uh, each year they have between 8 to 11 releases. So I'm talking about 14.10 was the last 14 release, and then there was 15 release. So pretty much the minor release every month, and then patches, um, whatever it's um, feasible. So usually the major changes means there are some either breaking changes or very big changes coming in, uh, but minor changes the backwards compatible and don't break the schema really. Uh, if you're interested more, uh, I'll put the link to GitLab Expenses DevOps platform from TechCrunch. They do go through this article and covering some of the features in the new 15th release. Again, uh, yeah, uh, they just go into observability and security tools. We only will cover one of them today. And uh, yeah, let's jump straight away into the new features. Again, as I said, all these features are available for free and most of them I'll try to demonstrate if it's not gonna work or yeah, if something breaks well, that's the live demo for you. I tried most of them myself already, so that's quite interesting. So the first one is, as it says here, where you can edit code blocks, links, and media in line in what you see is what you get editor. This is specifically for Wiki. Like many other code environments, we have a Wiki, and Wiki is here. So if we go to Wiki, there should be one. Here we go. So I already created one page in Wiki, and um, as a standard Wiki, you can use Markdown to create the code. Here is a page I created before, and even put some PHP uh, code in there. There you go. Here's so some let's code. try to yep. do some. Uh, do. So we can obviously uh, use, uh, you know, uh, Markdown text. Put the code here. And uh, use the editor here. So you can see it's a markdown. There's no header, so I'll just do like that. So create a page. And here's our, you know, standard wiki page. So the new features uh, actually uh, allows you to do a rich editor. So rich editor is basically looking at your, you know, what you see is what you get. With the wig editor. And here you can actually do some stuff here. Like uh, we have examples and example include code. So if I copy, you can see now the actual uh, code is copied in the format that it was. So here it actually even copies some uh, HTML span span, which we don't really need. Going back to reach editor. Now we have an ability to insert the code, insert image, insert code block. So here block code so I can go and copy particular code. The good thing about it now, the new feature is instead of just plain text, I can actually find what it is and there is more than a hundred different languages here. So this is CSS, but I can also do and go PHP. So there is PHP and PHP template. I'm not sure actually what's the difference is, but I'll go back to CSS. 
click on it, you can see, uh, yeah, it's formatted as a specific text. So if we copy something with a link, is there anything with a link? Let's copy maybe the language. Here, uh, one of the new features again, you can edit the link straight from here. So you can edit the link, uh, cancel, you can remove the link and do a bunch of stuff straight within the editor. Apparently, there's the same thing with uh, media. So if we'll have an image. One of the good things what I like about so I can copy image, paste it here. You can see it pastes straight away. Uh, it actually uploads it here, so it's actually lo locally stored. It. And now we have different uh, things about the image to do locally as well. Save, so this is changes. So this is a wiki and changes to uh, Markdown WYSIWYG editor that uh, in the future that will probably translate to a code. So you would be able to do that in the code. Again, most of the features you don't need because in the code you need different sort of things. But again, they have a um, web ID, which they use. Uh, you can use it online to edit your code and commit your code. Okay, next feature is uh, internal notes. So internal notes, something that um, uh, they just added the checkbox here, say make it an internal note. The reason for that is, especially if you're running and there is ability to run uh, GitLab as a service desk, so you can actually link it to a service desk. Some of the notes you don't want clients to see. So if we go to our board, and uh, if we click on a task that I created called Joomla demo, uh, you'll see that in the comment, there is a checkbox saying, make this an internal note. And the help says, internal notes are only visible to the author, assignees, and members with a role of reporter or hire. Again, there are user roles. Uh, you can actually assign user when you invite them. So now if you think this information is sensible, for example, you're talking about, um, Estimation, so estimation is six hours, but you don't want the cloud to see it. You mark is an internal node, and now you can see it's not at the comment, it's at internal node. You can, ooh, thread here. So now it's marked as an internal node, and uh, it's only visible whoever you assign in the different sections on your right hand side. So this is something useful. Again, when you have uh, clients interacting with you, not necessarily everything you want to share with them. Uh, and this is one of the useful features where uh, your colleagues would see the estimation and maybe someone can come in and say, no, I think it's going to take 10 hours to do that. You obviously don't want to see your client, um, for your client to, you're trying to estimate how long the task will have and what, what sort of features you're trying to do. So mark it as an internal node and, off you go. Next one. Oh, that's an interesting one. It's kind of a big thing. So they actually decided to add um, CRM features into GitLab, which was a total surprise uh, to me. But I think the idea is, uh, and I saw that happening as well when they introduce a lot of clients if they're not hands-on with the features you know if they hire you on the, like monthly basis maybe you do one or two days for them they don't really want to go into a new system like GitLab check through the tickets they do, and there is no way to notify them so the CRM I think is trying to first and foremost to try to solve the um, that type of task so not becoming a full-scale crm but you can add external organization you can add external context to this organization uh there is a bill rate i'm not sure i think it's just a number from what i saw uh and then you can add context to a particular task so they would be notified that uh, about the task update 
and then I guess you can view the issues associated with a given contact. So then you can actually explore the contact and uh, yeah, and uh, see all the issues related to that. So if I'll go back to my organization, uh, this feature actually needs to be enabled. So in my settings, general permission and group features, here I went and enabled enable customer relations. Once enable customer relations, you'll get a new menu item called customer relations. And here you'll get organization and contacts. Again, very simple form, just a feature that was introduced. You can go and create new organization. Great. Again, as I said, looks like it's just a number. And the description, if you want to add in the description. Something went wrong. Let's try again. Something went wrong. It's uh, objecting to you writing Joomla all the time. I think the default rate should be set, but they say it's optional. I think it's a bug, actually. No, that worked. Huh. All right. I'll see if we can replicate later on. Anyway, so we created two organizations, Joomla and Joomla 2. Maybe I should have created Joomla 4. Uh, we can add the contacts here. So a new contact would be Joomla, 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 uh, example.org, phone optional organization, Joomla, and description optional. Okay. So now we have this contact. So now if we'll go back to the issues. This is uh, issues for the organization. So I need to go back to my uh, back to my task that I created for a specific project, not the whole organization. Here, when I edit it, and you can see uh, the contact section is already there, so I can go from here and say add contacts, and it would load the list of contacts that I can add. And if I wanna, I think, remove contact, uh, remove the previous contact here so I can do it all through the editor. So it just says uh, I removed one and edited one. And then when I go to this particular contact, I can see all the issues assigned to this particular contact. So again, something that's uh, very uh, basic. But very interesting to see these features come into, you know, a tool primarily used for code. Um, most of the features that uh, GitLab introduced over the years started very, very small. Uh, and then, you know, blooming into a big thing. I think the only thing that I saw that never happened was the chat integration. They wanted to integrate the chat inside here. So something, um, uh, something like Slack. So they even bought Gitter, but didn't last long and they sold Gitter very, very quickly. So yeah, not sure what happened there, but looks like uh, they decided not to go down the chat way, but it's interesting how they keep on pulling different things together. So now you actually have external contacts without uh, forcing them to register. Uh, I'm not sure what sort of notification those contacts are getting, if any. Uh, I'll just be reading more about it, but it would be definitely useful to me uh, for the clients who was like, no, nah, I'm not registering. I'm not interested. You just send me the report, send me your work, and uh, we're good. So it would be good to have you know tasks assigned to specific clients. Also, if you have one repo, uh, 
across shared across multiple clients. I think that's also a useful feature as well. So you can actually tag different clients if uh, there is a single repo for multiple clients as well. Any questions about CRM? Stands for customer relationship management, and there's plenty I of. I assume, Vlad, I assume that when, uh, say, you sent me an update on a task or, a, or a, an assignment, um, that when I messaged back, it would update in the system? Or, or does that not? So there is a feature like that. There is specific email. Uh, let me see if I can find it. So that was already there ages ago. So you can actually send email to a specific email. Uh, here you go. So they actually give you a specific email here. And anyone can message to this email and it would put the... Uh, put the uh, comment, uh, this email as a comment. So this feature was already there. Again, I'm not sure if it actually notifies the external comment. I think it's mostly for you to manage the clients who are not in the system uh, at that time. I know others, like whoever is actually registered with GitLab, uh, you can choose the level of notification. Is it like every time you get mentioned or you can get, you know, like with the GitHub. Every time something is updated, every time you get mentioned, or every time your issue is updated, or never send me anything kind of thing. So there is same level of things. But with this particular, with CRM, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you can send an email. It doesn't look like it. Uh, I think it's just for you. Because here, there is not much functionality. So contact, view issues, or edit. That's it. So I don't think it even notifies the customer that they will add it to this database. You know, like it would in CRM. Uh, okay, a couple more features because I completely bore you. So now we're going a bit technical. So if you don't understand Docker containers, uh, pipelines, don't worry about it. I'll be quick. And uh, I won't even get to show you. But if you're interested in more in-depth dive, I might do a presentation in the future about this specific thing. So container scanning available in all tiers. I think this is, I mentioned that most of the security features are, are paid for. So that's an interesting move where GitLab gives you ability to do a container scanning. Now to roll back, a bit, they actually GitLab is a container repository as well. So I'm not sure if GitHub is already doing it or not, but same thing you do if you use Docker, you know, you can, you have uh, like um, two public repositories, you can push your containers in and the containers, it's like an infrastructure and uh, infrastructure and the code together really that's what container is it's basically your application doesn't matter how far you di dissect usually that's what it is so there is a drupal container uh on do docker.org that contains the whole drupal application there's joomla container there so you can actually download the container in it would include a container running php and everything you need for your application so you can push it back to docker Dot org. So you actually, if you need to store the containers yourself, or if you don't trust docker.com, you can do it on gitlab.com and have your private container repository. For example, uh, your company, you know, packages the application in the container and then deploys them. That's a perfect spot to do that. I'm not sure how they charge for a container repository and I'm not sure what the limits are. So if you're interested in that, check it out. But what they introduced is a container scanning. Uh, and container scanning, you can add to your pipeline. Pipeline, it's uh, the executable. Um, once you push your code, you can say, this code uh, for this on this branch is executable. And uh, part of the execution, you can say, scan my containers. So if you're using any containers, uh, you can scan them and uh, it would use its own database to say, oh, okay, this container has outdated PHP. This container has outdated uh, Debian Linux. 
this container would have like it would actually go and test the container for some security vulnerabilities and tell this container is then like for me it doesn't really matter i only use containers for uh testing and uh, i only use containers for ci so to actually deploy things most of my clients either using managed hostings or uh, you know C panel. So uh, again, cannot deploy containers there. They either like manage host and run their own containers or like C panel, you know, there's no ability to run the container. So for me, it's not a big thing. But for example, if you package in your application and deploy into, you know, to AWS as a container or DigitalOcean or uh, Azure or Google Cloud, this is very, very cool feature because you don't want to you know, deploy a uh, image with uh, Linux with a zero day vulnerability, which been plenty of late. Uh, so that's a very, very cool tool. And you can basically say, here's another step. And it's a scanning for security vulnerabilities in your containers. Any questions about containers, scanning or containers or Docker? Uh, the last, sorry. Does Joomla have, um, I know uh, Drupal has uh, images. Does uh, Drupal have images in the Docker cloud, you know, in the Docker mm -hmm. containers? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. If there is. I'm sure there is Joomla in, in, in Docker, yeah? Right? Yes, I think I saw one. Uh, yeah. I'm yeah, not sure if is. it's, I'm not sure if it's official, but. Should be. There is a WordPress for sure. Here you go. It's official. So it's a single slash. So, yep. So if it goes underscore Joomla, so here's official Docker image. Uh, you can get the latest version and it tells you what it runs, right? So, for example, if you're running latest image, which is PHP 7.4, Apache uh, 4.1.4, um, yep, it usually runs the latest version and it will scan this container. So, where will you would use a GitLab? container repository, you would download this container, then you install your app with all your bells and whistles, custom extensions, you know, uh, and package it as a container, then you can push it to your private repository and scan this container. So by the time this version of PHP or this version of Apache is vulnerable, next code push, you would actually, uh, the uh, scanning of the container would let you know, hey, there is Apache update. Oh, there is a uh, operating system is outdated. You better not deploy this container. And uh, yeah, and the last feature again, talking about pipelines, something might be um, small, but you can actually can now use. So when you deploy to the pipeline, pipeline comes with a lot of variables, like which commit which environment it's pushing, which branch, uh, and so on and so forth. There is a couple of dozens of variables that GitLab already provides to you and you can use them. So now you can actually define variables using the already defined variables, like environment name, stack name, commit slug, which is uh, basically a particular commit, and so on and so forth. So just uh, using existing variables to create new variables like a URL, for example, from uh, your application. Again, this is something for those who are interested in CI/CD, uh, continuous integration pipelines. There is stack more. If you go to the release notes, there's stack more free features. Just look for those uh, six or three highlighted triangles. That means it's uh, available everywhere. As I mentioned, there's a bunch of Kubernetes stuff and like, yeah. So uh, have a look. So this is just covering GitLab 15 release. Do we have any questions? It oh, looks uh, pretty, pretty comprehensive, um, Vlad. Um, and I, I guess if anybody is using GitLab, uh, sorry, if anybody's using GitHub or an alternative, like um, what's the transition if they wanted to go and move their repositories across into GitLab? Is it easy or difficult or? 
there is a lot of new things about the actual migration from GitHub. Uh, so if you go, uh, if you go to the list of features here, uh, so migration support, they actually now trying to migrate even things like milestones and, uh, yeah, so you, you, there is uh, some articles and bug fixes you can see about GitLab migration. So I can tell you about my kind of story of how I ended up with the GitLab. That was six six years ago. So first, one of my DevOps friends, they uh, recommended uh, use Bitbucket. At the time, GitHub, you couldn't get any custom repositories for free. Uh, not custom, the, the private ones. Uh, Bitbucket had like three or four. So I I started moving my code at Bitbucket. At the same time, Bitbucket introduced Bitbucket pipelines. I was just in beta, and this is where I saw, oh, cool, you can actually push your code and at the same time execute something next to it, like check your code for coding standards. That was pretty cool. And, um, and then the same friend said, hey, I just recently tried uh, GitLab. And uh, yeah, you probably should do that. At that time, I think it's still the case they have unlimited uh, private repos. Uh, so if you are struggling with your bill uh, to GitHub, it's I'm not saying don't pay, but if you're struggling with your bill, like uh, GitLab is a good alternative uh, there. Again, there are pathways and they definitely improve their migration tools. Uh, there is plenty of things to go through, um, like, uh, as I said, the continuous integration, continuous delivery, testing. Uh, but whatever you use, really, uh, I think this presentation more about just go and check it out. What sort of features do they have? Because um, everyone now, even GitHub, has, you know, like actions and issues. Just start using them. Just use one project and start using That's how I started. So... Yeah, I uh, I usually don't use wikis, and uh, because I found <laughs> that was the hardest thing back like six years ago to migrate because no one was migrating wikis. I'm not sure what's the, what's the situation now because I moved all my documentation into MD files and packaged them with the repo. So all my documentation now sits next to the code. So if developer comes in, I point them to the documentation. If anyone else is on board on the project, I point them documentation, which is basically part of the, you know, code rather than, um, otherwise I didn't have any troubles to migrate in just the code based repositories to GitLab if anyone wants to try, but it's also pretty easy, you know, to, if you develop a Joomla extension to try it on GitLab instead of on, um, you know, Bitbucket or GitHub, just to see the difference. Um, yeah, always shop around for features, uh, which what I do, uh, I do develop a number of projects on the GitHub, but GitLab is still my preferred way to push my repositories from scratch. Uh, I kind of abandoned that last hand in Bitbucket, um they didn't gain enough speed they were really slow on doing the pipelines back in the day whereas gitlab was there and they kind of abandoned it i'm sure they have a bunch of new features as well uh but person personally i'm not a big fan of atlas and just the tools the way they approach them um another interesting thing about gitlab if you want to learn more subscribe to the youtube channel they do things called GitLab Unfiltered, where they actually record the meetings uh, to plan the new features. And uh, I guess the winning thing for me is you can actually go and fix things. You cannot do this for uh, you cannot do this for Bitbucket. You cannot do this for GitHub. You can only do it for GitLab. You can actually go and contribute the code if you think something is broken, like we found today.